Good deal. Uh, thank you everyone for joining back up with us uh, this afternoon after lunch. Hopefully, hopefully everyone enjoyed your, your lunch break uh, this afternoon. Uh, my name is G. Kim. I'm a shareholder of the, in our Singapore office, uh, Vetter Price of the Global Transportation Finance Team. Um, I have here today an esteemed panel of, of, uh, of industry experts who, frankly, probably doesn't need much of an introduction, but for the sake of uh, completeness, we'll kind of go through the list. I'll give a short introduction and then we'll get right started. Yep. Uh, to my immediate left is Mr. Zhu Jiafeng, Managing Director, Ship Lease Leasing Department at AVIC International Leasing. Uh, next to him is Mr. Lu Jindong, Deputy Head of Shipping, Bank of Communications Financial Leasing. Next to him is Mr. Jack Zhu, Deputy Head of Shipping, CMB Financial Leasing. Mr. Alex Yan, Deputy General Manager of Asset Management, CSC, Hong Kong Shipping Company. Uh, we're tracking down uh, Mr. Bill Guo. But uh, last but not least, at the end there is uh, Mr. Jerry Yang, CEO of Shipping, Offshore and Logistics at Minxing Financial Leasing. All right, as you can tell, we've got a, um, the topic for today is uh, financial leasing. And as, as previously mentioned, uh, this, this panel, I think they they have much um, words and wisdom to share with us here today. So, so let's uh, the first area we want to touch upon is, uh, you know, where is the new capital coming from, and and what does the leasing world look like today? But to give a little bit of frame of reference, um, let's, let's kind of compare to what um, how the role and the market presence of Chinese leasing companies in the shipping sector differ to differ today compared to uh, five years ago. So uh, let's, um, Mr. Zhu, if you want to start, since you're the closest to me, and then a, a friendly word from everyone down the line. Yep. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Actually, I have a suggestion. Since uh, all of our leading companies are from China, and uh, I suppose uh, we discuss this topic in Chinese, could be much better. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a uh, popular sentiment shared, I guess. <laughs> yeah. 呃刚刚那个主持人说了这个问题是说这个资金呃现在我们行业的资金从什么地方来我们租赁公司呃在这五年里面最近发展非常快其实前面一个 呃，我们AVIC leasing是作为呃所有的中国的租赁公司里面在传播业务里面，应该是做的比较中游的一家租赁公司，所以非常有幸能够进入在这个panel上和各位大佬们同台呃谈交流。但是呢，我一直认为租
providing by Mr. Zhu. So I fully agree uh, about uh, his uh, opinions with regarding to uh, the industry and recently, uh, the, uh, particularly for the de development and of all our business, and not only in Chinese market, but also for the global market. And uh, we, we, we think uh, uh, it is an uh, interaction, actually, and between uh, shipping industry and uh, Chinese leasing industry. It is a uh, need, and we just accommodate that need. So, uh, of course, it is an uh, opportunity for all of us. Because in the, uh, uh, at this uh, particular moment, and, and if we lo looking back, and uh, we we understand all of European banking corporation, they they just are facing something about the delivery issue. So we feel this gap. Yes, we did. So in the in the coming years, and uh, we we think we will still still to 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 think up uh, think again about our solution towards the shipping industry. So, so I totally agree with Mr. Chu. Uh, so I, I think uh, uh, my colleague uh, sitting beside me will uh, also agree this uh, uh, comment. Thank you. Jack. Yes, I, I, I think I do think uh, the Chinese leasing company is in the process of a kind of a transformation compared to the five years ago. Um, we would like to uh, achieve an uh, organic growth instead of just a rapid, uh, simple expansion. So we wanted to contribute more value to the industry. And uh, yes, we are not relying on the simple high leverage and uh, provide more flexibility for our clients. Maybe we can uh, do some um, very innovative uh, structure and also have some new ideas. Uh, my understanding, uh, some of our peers already have uh, established very good relationship with our with some uh, big calculators, some big traders, commodity traders. So they already uh, maybe uh, place some little bit in orders uh, directly by themselves uh, with CBRs. So maybe that's kind of a new trend. So uh, um, that's maybe a, a kind of a new structure we can uh, we can uh, move forward. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, uh, Luzon and the Bill have more information and knowledge for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, actually, in China, we have more than six thousand leasing company with uh, long history. Some some of them with forty or forty-five years history, but uh, all of us are around, uh, I think uh, they have long, longest history, around 10 years. And uh, I think uh, all other four, maybe it's just five years, six years, or seven years, not many years. But uh, my perception with uh, leasing company in China, uh, especially for shipping and energy, is when we compare with five years ago, we are, five years ago we are still establishing we are still develop, developing, but now we are becoming one of the midstream shipping uh, institutions. While shipping and uh, economy centers are being at uh, Easternization phase, and we are going to Western now. Thank you, Alex. Bill. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, this uh, is a very good opportunity for all of us to sit on the same table. So we uh, try to share knowledge, not two, and uh, compete each other. So that's what I would say the principle. I would say it's okay, yes. boys. And uh, we actually and do more, you know, through our cooperation instead of just doing it alone. It's very important because in general we're still the Chinese and uh, leasing company. So in front of our European or maybe international customers, we represent the Chinese financial institution. So, for example, last year, and we went to the Athens. We met and a few in the local big shipping company. They do know about the Chinese banks, but they don't know much knowledge about our leasing structures, how it works, other things. But this year, the last month, I went to Athens again. Most people just say, "Okay, Bill, you don't need to introduce any further about the leasing structure. We know about this. Actually, we're going to sign the contract tomorrow with one of your boys and uh, in China or in Shanghai, someplace. So just go straight, to, you know, tell me what kind of offer to me. So basically, in the past one year, more and more, I would say, international shipping company know about China leasing structures. It's actually good news, which means we could, uh, you know, to offer more service through our leasing structure, you know, besides the bank loan. So from this 
perspective, I think um, you know we are facing lots of new opportunities. Uh, of course, there's a lot of new competitions, you know, like just mentioned about 6,000 leasing company and uh, all of them try to set up like a shipping division, but it's very specialized. Not everyone can do this by themselves. They have to you know, cooperate sometimes, they have to steal our you know, colleague from my company to join them. <laughs> and uh, that's the truth. So, and, uh, but it's good, you know, it's good through and the cooperation through and uh, we export our expertise to the rest of the company to do together. So, and, uh, but you know, we keep the business and uh, eventually my point would be to bring the, sh the, the manufacturing back to China, actually to help for the Chinese manufacturer to their shipbuilding countries. So, yeah, I'm looking very positive. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. And last but not least, uh, Jerry, your thoughts? Wow, thank you. It's a good question. And uh, it is always difficult to answer the question, uh, you know, to turn the last one, <laughs> last turn. And, you know, we just uh, celebrate the 10th birthday of our company. And uh, now it's a good question. It's also about time, five years. Uh, interesting to see back to the five years ago we Chinese leasing firms especially our company we just started our international business started almost zero from almost zero and uh, I'm so happy to see that today everybody here know Chinese leasing industry and have an idea of what we're going to do and what kind of uh, that's, that's a structure deal we're going to offer uh, that's fact shows that we are part of the global shipping financing world and uh, we're much more experienced let's not just talk about the big difference we are much more experienced we have much much bigger portfolio you know especially compared with zero to billions of dollars and we account for about maybe i'm not quite sure 20 percent of the total portfolio to the transactions per year well that shows great great improvement and just talk about something in i believe deeper deeper and personally i try to answer the question what is the financial what is the financial everybody knows we are chinese financial leasing company and uh, somebody just said uh, just talk about the leasing company the history of leasing company in China we have over 45 uh, maybe four, uh, yeah 45 years history but the financial leasing industry just started from 10 years ago why just because financial that's the key term here the definition to my understanding is how to collect the money how to be regulated we're a financial institute. That's the main driver of uh, how strong we are today. Without, without the funding, without the funding, uh, relatively sufficient funding, nobody can, nobody can turn this, you know, gr growth into realities. No way of doing that. So that's the most important key term: financial. What is the financial? First of all, again, how we are regulated. And secondly, how can we collect the money from the market? And secondly, when we talk about financial, uh, we talk about financial lease. What is the financial lease? Financial lease, basically, it is, it is a kind of term. But today, we try to do something more, more than just a financial lease. We may do something like operating lease, and we use some structured financial lease. We try to develop something special, something new, add some new elements to the market, to the whole industry, in shipping, in finance. And uh, I think we are still on the way. <laughs> yep, thank you, Jerry. Um, certainly, Jerry doesn't mince words here. So. So um, th that's actually a great segue to sort of the next topic I want to address. Uh, you know, we're in a sort of a you know, macro sort of environment. You know, we hear, we turn on the news, we hear about potential trade wars, or you know, we certainly heard about earlier um, the, the 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 point about LIBOR rising substantially <laughs> uh, in the recent days, uh, the highest level we've seen since like 2008, I believe. Um, so based with that backdrop, you know, what kind of what types of deals and owners are, are actually qualifying for leasing? So um, perhaps we can start back here, um, Mr. Zhu. Uh, I think different leasing companies will have different 
呃，首先，为什么我说中文，他们说英文呢？<笑>其中一个重要原因就是，这里面我和 Mr. 严严先生两位，我们是企业，就是制造业企业下属的组成公司，另外四位都是银行下面的子公司，所以从这个角度上来说，他们会比我更加 international。<笑>呃，另外一方面，呃，我 a v i c Leasing 我的客户里面一半是呃海外客户，一半是国内客户，所以我比他们会有更多的国内的听众在下面，因此我说中文，这是第一个。第二个呢，嗯、呃，这里面有 SBC Leasing， 有 b a l k a n Leasing， 这些都是在租赁公司里面我们称之为大哥级的人物，嗯、呃，他们能够。调拨非常大的资金，我一直强调，资金不是我们自己的，我是我们调拨来的。而银行有更强的资金调拨能力，他们把这些资金聚集起来以后，投入更大规模的项目，尤其是航运领域中间的 first tier 的客户。那我 a v i c Leasing 没有这么强大的能力，所以我们在市场上的定位就会和他们不一样，我们会比较倾向于做一些。三千美元到一个亿美元之间的中型甚至是小型的项目，在客户偏好里面也会选择一些中等规模的客户。呃，我会争取比银行租赁公司更加的 flexible， 同时在很多交易结构方面，我们的这种流动性的控制可能会比他们反而要严格一些。比如说，如果我要谈一个两亿美元以上的项目的话。我可能会同时和银行谈好项目的再融资，我才会做这样的项目，而不像我们大哥级的 ICBC 和 b o n k e n 可以一下子五亿、六亿这样的大项目直接用它的流动资金来解决问题。所以我觉得，不同的企业有它不同的基因，不同的基因决定它的偏好会怎么样。我相信在座的不管是国内的还是欧洲来的朋友们，我们都有。很多的合作空间，就这样。还有美国来的朋友，美洲美洲来的朋友。Again, I fully agree with Mr. Zhu. <笑><笑> And the book on leasing, I, I'm coming from. So we are,、uh, we we have our, our、uh, foreign uh, uh, station office in Hamburg. So that is why, and we emphasize, and we are、uh, dealing with some uh, uh, big deals. And、uh, for instance,、uh, we have a very much portfolio in liner shipping. And、uh, last year, we did quite a lot, and、uh, for oil uh, tanker uh, business. And this year, we'll do、uh, as well. And for uh, some uh, segmentation, uh, we are which and we are interesting in. So for the clients and uh, who re、uh, who really、uh, we wish to、uh, work with that is that the company who providing、uh, the proper or exactly the transportation、uh, solution to to the industry、uh, then then we will go with him. In which case that then we go with a, a long term、uh, business charter parties and if、uh, there is a,、uh, some opportunity at the marketplace, but、uh, it is not only、uh, a recipe that we are we are going to providing to the market. We are also、uh, try to specialize or customize and or solution according to the market situations. So far. And uh, there are、uh, a lot of uh, uh, segmentation still、uh, on the way、uh, from the low point and, uh, and going to uh, average uh, 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 five years average uh, levels uh, uh, revenues. Uh, I mean and the, the earning. So we we still think we have a, a plenty of、uh, opportunities to growing with this uh, uh, market situations. So、uh, again, I agree with、uh, Mr. Chu. So we we are we we are different uh, uh, companies, and、uh, of course we 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 are doing employ a different strategy. So uh, so uh, I really hope and uh, uh, the shipping industry or shipping society uh, from uh, uh, different places and、uh, and together here. Uh, and then you will find a different solution, and then you have a better, better solution for your business. Thank you.
Thank you for those words. Um, Jack, uh, same question, but I think if we can perhaps tailor it down a little bit more, um, if I was a uh, ship owner out there and I want to start checking some boxes as to whether I'm a good candidate uh, for a relationship with the leasing companies and, and lease financing, you know, what are some of the characteristics that you would expect to see from those owners? Yes, um, I think uh, of course definitely uh, we always consider all of the potential deals based on many uh, criterions. Yes, I, I just uh, as I talked last year, there are um, uh, three C or we call four C's or five C's. That mean uh, uh, characters, uh, collaterals, cash flows, what of uh, uh, etc. Uh, these kind of things. Uh, and during all of the uh, characterizations, uh, we do think the most important thing is the characters. So we very uh, um, uh, pay uh, most attention to the, the characters of our clients. We think the people is the most uh, is the key uh, key uh, factor for all of the deals, all of the companies. We do think uh, also within our company we have a very excellent leadership within our group. Yes, just like uh, Captain Xie. And by the way, congratulations to uh, Captain Xie. We have a, a very excellent uh, leadership within our group, so we can do our best deals. Yes, and uh, what 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 kind of uh, offers? Um, um, uh, can uh, look for from our uh, clients. Uh, so we do think uh, we are we 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 quite uh, have very wide um, aspect for looking at uh, whistle types and the project finance and uh, based on uh, corporate credit and maybe we can based on the project cash flows also uh, based on uh, pay, focus more um, on the asset types. That depends on the case by case or all of the uh, the special uh, uh, characters of the uh, each uh, projects. Okay, thank you for that, uh, Mr. Yan. I agree with all three gentlemen, <laughs> and uh, because we have 20% Chinese customer and 80% uh, uh, international customer, so I speak maybe 20% Chinese, <laughs> like uh, thank you. Mr. Zhu, and 80% English. <laughs> okay.实际上我们中产租赁的客户呢有大客户像达菲啊像星散啊这样的大客户然后也有小客户他只有一条外贸船但是也很好啊这个不管什么样的客户不管什么样的地有只要他这个客户这个职业敬业然后值得信任这就可
So we are missing this part of knowledge, missing part of the, I would say, the expertise. Maybe in the future, maybe in the things we have to do more, and I would say that there may be based the asset trading. So hopefully maybe the shipping in the one day could be think about also use them maybe. So this part of knowledge is the catch up, I would say. And um, that's why I would say about, you know, it's not like I would say high or low and uh, it's big or small. You know, doesn't matter, you know, it's a Chinese based asset. I think it's still interesting to study on that. Uh, that's my point one. And uh, point two would be, and uh, you know, since uh, why everyone's called ICBC is very big, and um, ICBC leasing very big because ICBC itself is a, well, the largest bank. So we have such a kind of image there. So when I talk some smaller business, people say, well, don't waste your time. It's, it's not so your style, you know. <laughs> like, uh, like I talk about you know, something else. It's not your style, which means it, it shouldn't waste your time on that things. You should talk something big, which uh, match you know, your mother company and the business. So even we have a very small branch, for example, in the purse, you know, only two people there. They only talk about like FMG and the Rio Tinto and uh, talk about billing, billing, billion your dollars because we are ICBC. It's very straightforward. So, and uh, you know, even we have a small office, only two people there, we will talk about big deal. Okay, I understand that. So, which same for the ICBC leasing. So when I joined ICBC leasing and uh, four years ago, so we also try to do some uh, small business, you know, looking like for the cash flow and everything. I like, present to our, our CEO and said, about Bill, everything is perfect. Only the small problem is the asset itself, only like five million US dollars. You have to take about 100 times to can achieve your annual goal. So we don't have much time to spend on that. So your annual budget is about five billion US dollars. You have to do that by all means. So don't waste time for the small ones, just go to the big boys. That's why we have to catch like Wally, catch for the FMG, catch for like a Rio Tinto. Those are also maybe catch for the Cargill because they need a big amount of the investment which to do the match same thing. On the other hand, which means if the Chinese company also grow that big, they also grow to the international globalization, they do need also similar kind of, I would say, the financial or also the capital support. On that word, not just ICBC, but other of the China leasing companies do the same, but of course, the different companies have different uh, capital cost. So we can do kind of different, I would say, the match to do these things. So I would say in general, that's why I said about there's no stand down, so it depends on, I would say, the timing. Now the US dollar become more expensive, so we have to think about how can we do this to, you know, manage your portfolios. One thing I want to mention right now, actually, I'm thinking about something, just brainstorming, and the, 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 the shipping trust, or maybe the shipping and the, the risk structure, because then the, we can't use our money, continue to do these things. Eventually, we have to use the public money, like people are sitting here, interested for the shipping, but maybe one single ship too expensive. So you only want to invest maybe 10,000 US dollars, but you want to gain 10% or 12% in, increase the return. How can I do this? So this kind of the same something would be do this. Those kind of money could be added into our leasing structures to be the, of the total solution to our customers. You know, so that's my thing. Thank you. That's quite insightful. Um, Jerry, um, along the same lines, uh, your thoughts, but if we could also hint upon, sort of address sort of the vessel types that you're looking at, I think the questions might be more out for uh, you anyway. I think given historically, um, I think, the idea that you may be able to take some speculative interests and in investments in certain sectors uh, of the industry, but uh, we're happy for your thoughts that you can share. It's a good question, a very important question. And uh, you know, shipping, especially shipping finance, is a very interesting industry and uh, a risky industry, in, especially when we talk about just the counterparty game. That's the traditional banking wheel. Because shipping basically is a Marco industry. We talk about cycles. We talk about the Marco. You know, any, any miracle, uh, no, no, miracle, any, any traditional, let's say, traditional banking type of uh, risk management measures, unfortunately, cannot mitigate this kind of a Marco risk. No way. <coughs> We see the fact, uh, you know, the track record of European banks, what they have done. They are much more experienced in terms of this kind of a risk control measure, sophisticated, complicated, but uh, just it cannot deliver. And uh, I'm not sure whether uh, proper to use the word the failure, but uh, basically not successful. Uh, that's point one. Secondly, uh, you know, when we talk about the start, talk at the start as a leasing company, 
everybody want to start from big, from stability, from phenomenal. That's why um, you know almost all of us just started from those big liners, started from those big uh, oil majors or this sort of uh, big guys together. And why? Because they just approve themselves can be survivors even if in such a big cycle, in such a big cycle. And talk about uh, what kind of deal, what kind of investment we're going to be looking at. Honestly, I believe it is the right time to think something different from traditional banking, you know, risk control measure or the system, do something quite different. My idea is to set up an an assessment, assessment system to evaluate what kind of deal we're going to do and uh, to allocate the equity, allocate the risk asset properly rather than just to focus on one, two segments. For instance, we may do some financial lease, we may have some you know, big deals with uh, the top tier, top tier clients. Everybody knows their name, everybody wants to knock door with them. Uh, secondly, we may allocate some certain exposure to do something totally different. For example, uh, just now, uh, Bill said something like, you know, profit share. Yes, it is. It is very interesting, and we do have this sort of, uh, this sort of uh, deals. And maybe direct investment, for example, uh, we have buckers. We may look at tankers, gas carrier, whatever. You know, we try to allocate proper, proper, size of the capital to do this sort of uh, you know interesting deal that's the reason we can work together with all of you we want to set up a whole system rather than just to play as a bank or play as a pure equity fund or this sort of a type of a, a something somebody already existed there no we are a little bit different the third point is that you know as a leasing company we are new kind of a new in industry, kind of a new animal. We do this sort of uh, transactions comprehensive, but we have long-term commitment. We have balance sheet to do this. That's maybe something very, very different from Wall Street, <laughs> very different from KG, from those you know existing animals. And I believe we can do something totally different. We can provide uh, good, uh, let's say, good solution, good solution. But we need to think more. We need to change. Yep. Thank you, Jerry. So I want to switch gears just a little bit here. And um, rather than going down the line, what I'll do is just open it up to the panelists here to chime in with their thoughts. Um, uh, it, was a dr it was kind of brought up in one of the earlier sessions today, but uh, joint ventures. Is that something that's keen on your plate? Something that you're that your companies are considering more of if you've done it, um, or something that you look like to do in the future? Uh, anybody? Anybody? Yeah. Okay. So, and uh, you know, for for our deals, ICBC leasing deal, we already done the three and joint venture. And uh, you know, one is our uh, you know Captain She and from China Merchant side, so it's very of great honor. We are continuing to do more with our partners and also have with one German one. Another one is the little bit smaller one. So joint venture is, our, is always our option. Maybe our, could be our number one option. Because um, if you do more and uh, I would say the operation leasing, we have to and, uh, share the risk, of course, share the profit with our partners. That's the only solution you can do to avoid maybe just purely the financial, I would say financer involving the shipping. Because like uh, Gerald's other people mentioned about here, you know, the shipping is a kind of dangerous or risky business. You can't just take all the risk by yourself. You have to share the risk but without the shared profit. That whole hard concept for the joint venture. So we do like a joint venture, and also we are continue to do this thing this year, also in the near future. That's all. Thank you. Anybody else has something to uh, share here? We have some uh, existing joint venture structures. Uh, also, we would like to have some uh, similar uh, joint venture structure with Kevin Sia or likewise. Uh, the biggest, uh, they are necessary. The small, also, they are beautiful. Uh, why? Because you know we have a big one with uh, some uh, private equity-backed product tanker player. 
They have very big pool. They are quite successful, and uh, our ships are being well supervised and managed. And also we have some chemical tanker joint venture. So they are also a big player in their industry, but also we have a small barker joint venture. Uh, and so far the joint venture is quite successful. Uh, we get some uh, uh, profit from the joint venture. So uh, if you ask if you know, our potential joint venture customer are owners or other you know, uh, charters or traders, we are not limited. Uh, all the ship manager, uh, investors, including all of you, are, you, are welcome. If uh, you have uh, you know, your uh, strong point, you have your advantages, and uh, we can leverage, we can collaborate each other. Then we can cooperate. We can try to find opportunity in this industry. Shipping industry is quite traditional, but uh, we need more brainstorming. We need more innovation. We need more concept. Uh, uh, we, we need more uh, ideas. When you compare with other industries, I think all of us see uh, China fintech, uh, China media uh, industry. You no, know, they are growing very rapidly. And the shipping industry. We have to find the right solution to ensure that we can grow uh, in a healthy uh, mode. Thank you. Thank you. Um, along those themes, um, sort of the outlook for further growth, um, if the panel can address sort of the internalization of the financial leasing product and specifically of the Chinese financial leasing, you know, um, as we look to the future and look to grow even more internationally, you know, who are the players that you're looking at? Are there European ship owners, uh, North American players, um, players outside of you know outside of of China in Asia that are based in Asia? Sort of your thoughts there. Yeah, yes, we are looking for the clients from the over the world definitely, but I do think there are two types of uh, of, uh, of our um, uh, financial products, just like uh, Bill and uh, Alex said. So um, they can do a JV uh, with uh, some uh, traditional ship owners. I do think this is different, very different uh, with uh, with traditional sales uh, uh, leaseback. back. That's, that is quite similar to our bank loan, mortgage loan. So if we do our, uh, our traditional sales leaseback, back, there are many, many uh, rules, regulations, and the traditions we need to follow. And we have a lot of lessons from the bank side we need to follow. So um, that's quite a um, uh, very um, uh, old school fashion. So this is the very um, uh, traditional. But when you do GLV structure, this is totally different. That's kind of, uh, I, think, I do think that's kind of uh, um, private equity or some fund to do that. That's high risk, but you can uh, get the high return. So if we are the financial institutions, we shall be regulated by the uh, regul um, regulators. So we shall very um, uh, pay um, attention to our liquidity ourselves, not for our clients. So we shall very uh, focus on how we use our capitals. That mean um, always the capital is very limited. Everybody wanted to uh, have more capitals, but maybe SBC have a lot of capital. They have no limitation. <laughs> so, but we do think for everyone. So we sh we shall um, focus on how to make our capital to more efficient, to more safe. So um, I I do think. The JV structure shall be um, very uh, credential, uh, very crucial. We, we are very cautious on that, but we can do, we can move forward to find some innovation way to do that. And also, um, our bank just announced we are, from our top, uh, top settlement, they, they are, you know, we are trying to do what we are trying to do. We are not to act as a bank. We just uh, wanted to act as a fine tech uh, um, service company to provide this kind of uh, data and analysis uh, services to our clients. So that is uh, not like traditional bank. So my personal way, so for our shipping finance, there's, there's no uh, disruptive uh, innovation for the industry. So if we have some, this kind of very um, high um, 
uh, technology, uh, information technology, we can do analysis how we can to if if we can uh, install uh, scrubbers to these uh, uh, vessels to meet up the regulation of uh, 2020. Is is smart or stupid way to do that? So we can use data to analysis. So this is what we went to our, uh, from our um, uh, money uh, capital provider side. We wanted to do or to contribute the value to the industry. So not just uh, simply to partnership with uh, some cargo owners or to some GV structures. So this is my personal view. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jack. Uh, based on that, I think our time's up. Um, Nicholas, we have time for questions, or I think we're we're right headed right up. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for your attention today. I think that was very insightful uh, with the esteemed panel, and uh, thank to each of the panelists and, uh, and 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 for their for their thoughts today on on financial leasing. Thank you.